Hello, hey, my name is Jose Rodriguez, and uh, I am a postdoc in the, in the group of Dr. Frank at uh, ETH. And today I will be talking to you about this uh, TKF uh, project, uh, which as the title of my, of my talk says, uh, it has to do with the thermomechanical behavior of overhead transmission lines and clamps to their thermal limit. There, as, as uh, Dr. Paolone just, uh, just put it, uh, there is a, there is an, a willingness, uh, a need for, for the utilities to increase the flexibility, efficiency, and reliability of the Swiss transmission network uh, by using dynamic uh, thermal line rating. And I will explain soon what is this about. Uh, as, as we just saw, uh, integrating renewables and consumption is, is, uh, is a difficult task. So there is this willingness. And we, from this willingness from the, from the utilities, born this TechIF project, which is uh, a joint effort by, by several entities, uh, <clears throat> by utilities and research centers. And the goal of this project is to, the, uh, is to deliver the necessary know-how that allows the grid operator to better estimate the current capacity of each line in the Swiss transmission network. And since we are talking about the Swiss transmission network, uh, the focus of this, this TechF project focus only on aluminum alloy conductors. The, if you have a, a, a transmission line from the thermal point of view, the, the maximum energy, the maximum current you can put on the line is limited by a maximum temperature. There are several reasons why you need this maximum temperature. Uh, but probably one of the most important is that at this maximum temperature, the, you reach the maximum sag of your line. So it's a safety issue. Uh, if you have a, a conductor and you start passing current, the conductor will warm up. And at the point, if you keep on increasing the current, at the point where you reach the maximum temperature, which for aluminum alloy conductors is typically 80 degrees Celsius, <clears throat> at this point, it is said you reach your maximum current capacity of your line. You cannot go further. <clears throat> Otherwise, you would be violating this, this limit. And, uh, but of course, if, uh, if you have, for example, a strong wind, you have weather, you have a strong cold wind. This wind is going to cool down your line. So you will be able to pass a little bit more current before you reach this 80 degrees Celsius. So uh, the way it's current, this, this weather is taken into account to calculate the maximum current capacity of the transmission network in Switzerland is by using a seasonal scheme. Uh, some set of weather parameters are assumed during the summer, some set of weather parameters are assumed during the winter, and for example, during the summer, uh, it is uh, common to see that people assume to calculate the maximum current capacity, people assume that uh, the outside temperature is 40 degrees, which, thanks God, is not the case for Switzerland. And uh, <clears throat> uh, you can do better than this. You can, you can have more realistic assumptions. Uh, for example, today there is no sun, right? Uh, the temperature is certainly not 40 degrees. So <clears throat> you, can, you can go from a, from a scheme that assumes certain set of fixed parameters to something that is more realistic, and that is what is called the dynamic line rating scheme. In a dynamic line rating scheme, the maximum current capacity of the transmission line changes every day accordingly to the weather conditions. Now, there, this, it has been shown in several publications that this kind of scheme can increase your, your transmission capacity uh, and also to increase your, your, the, the reliability, the safety of your transmission line. But there is a concern that if you will be operating your network at average higher temperatures, it, then uh, it's not clear if uh, if your network will, will be robust. Uh, for example, if you, 
increase the transmission of the, the, the temperature of your conductors, aging, uh, mechanical properties of the of the conductors age faster, and uh, <clears throat> and 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 it's it's not clear if the network can take the bullet, right? So <clears throat> from this, borns the TKF project. It's divided in four work packages, and uh, it uh, the TKF project brings in a development of, temper of uh, uh, temperature model for transmission lines together with uh, studies of the mechanical properties of the line and everything to get, puts everything, we try to put everything together to create a comprehensive picture of the whole transmission line <clears throat> and also uh, 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 looks into how can this dynamic line rating uh, scheme can be integrated into, into the management of the network. Uh, so uh, for the rest of the, my talk, I will be going through these war, four work packages and trying to give you a flavor of what we have been doing in this project. Uh, the first work package, which I'm directly involved with, it uh, aims to develop uh, accurate uh, temperature line models uh, for, low, uh, for low loads and for high loads. Uh, but not only that, if you, <clears throat> we also look at uh, if you have a conductor and there's current flowing through it, the temperature in the inside will be different at the outside. And uh, we also explore how is this going to affect the operation of the line. Uh, we have also, it is, is very important uh, to assess what happens during uh, low wind conditions. Uh, and. Uh, these are some results we, we have found. Uh, our <clears throat> one of our partners, SwissGrid, has uh, installed sensors in some uh, real transmission lines uh, and little uh, meteorological stations, and we've been able to use modeling using this data, and we have been able to determine the <clears throat> the, temp the temperature of the line over a one-year period within three degrees Celsius. Uh, also, we have found, for example, here, uh, under very, under very uh, highest loadings uh, for the test conductor we have used, uh, the, the, the temperature, the gradient, the temperature difference between uh, core and surface can even reach 15 degrees Celsius, which will make a little difference on your, on your sag of your conductor, for example, which depends on the average conductor temperature, not only the surface temperature. <clears throat> and we have seen that the model, the temperature model produces good results, also at high current loads. Uh, here, this is real data, also, also provided to us by Swiss Grid. Uh, th during a fault, uh, a fault period of time, and uh, analyzing this data, we have realized, for example, that this is, is uh, very important, especially when you have very high current densities. It's very important to know uh, not only your current but also uh, wind, wind and the wind direction. Very important. Uh, it was not possible to reproduce this, this, uh, the behavior of the, the temperature of the line without taking into account the wind direction. <clears throat> the second work package from TKF looks into mechanical properties of the conductors, uh, in particular to the evolution of different mechanical and physical properties of individual wires and the whole conductor under different aging con uh, conditions. And our partners from EMPA have, uh, have looked at every relevant uh, mechanical uh, or, or electrical parameter. But not only that, they have also dedicated uh, a substantial effort to study what is the effect of manufacturing processes in the, w in the cables. And uh, <clears throat> using finite element analysis, uh, they, they saw that even in the, in the best case scenario, there are le residual stresses on the line, which can uh, according to their models, affect the, affect the mechanical properties of the line. 
And in fact, they, with using this experimental setup in their laboratory, they saw that they can see effects of the manufacturing processes in the creep behavior of the line. Inside this, this tube over here, they put a conductor, they warm it up, they, they, they go up to 80 Celsius, and they stretch it, they put uh, up to 50 megapascals, and they, they monitor how this conductor stretches as a function of time. And, they, and there they saw this effect on, on the, the, the effect of uh, manufacturing on the creep. Uh, uh, the th uh, third work package from TKF tries to take this, this thermal component, uh, this, this, mod uh, this modeling of the line, from the first work package, together with, this, with the mechanical part, uh, and brings everything together to make a comprehensive picture of the conductor. Uh, so it takes the conductor as, 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 as it is, as the reality. It's a thermoelectrical mechanical coupling. And, uh, <clears throat> and one, of the, of the, one of the most important things that will come out from this work package is the identification of critical zones on the conductor. Uh, you can think of it as, as the weak points. What are the weak points? You will be operating your line at a higher temperature. Well, uh, where's, where's the link point? For example, uh, will it be the, the, the bulk cable or will it be the, the clamp zone where the stresses are the biggest? Uh, <clears throat> and we have used, uh, we are using uh, finite element simulations, for example, here, uh, the the, a piece of cable was attached and, and, and the cable was pressed and, and pulled like in a, like in a, like in a clamp uh, shown over here. But n not only that, we also go in the lab and, for example, here we have embedded a high density material inside the line and we have taken this line and we have stretched it and we monitor how this little dense, the, how this point moves as, as a function of tension by using X-ray imaging. Now, the, as I told you, the, this project aims to look at, at, uh, at uh, understanding everything comprehensively. So uh, we, we, don't, we not only look at what happens mechanically to the clamp if you just stretch it, we also, we also integrate the, the <clears throat> electrical behavior, if you're going to have a conductor that goes through a clamp, the clamp is made of metal. Uh, current will flow through the clamp. So if you want to get it right, you have to, you have to figure out how the, this current is going to warm up the clamp. The heat is not going to come, maybe, it's not going to come only from the conductor, but from the whole clamp as itself. <clears throat> And, and here you can see a finite element simulation where, where uh, we can see the current flowing through the, through the, through the uh, clamp. Now, the fourth work package of uh, TKF uh, aims to develop, implement, and validate optimal power flow schemes, which integrate dynamic line rating, and uh, Dr. Paolone can, can tell you much more about this. And here, I, I just want to, to give you an outlook from for after TKF. And uh, <clears throat> I, I just chose uh, some three points. But uh, <clears throat> for example, here in, uh, in, uh, in ETH Zurich, we have constructed this facility, which will allow us to test thermal models on transmission lines at very high current densities. Because unfortunately, the data we have from uh, our Swiss grid partners, uh, it's, a, it's a normal operation conditions, right? And, and, but the interesting thing is what happens with your conductors at high current densities. And this we will be able to, to test it over here. Of course, there are fault conditions like I, told, I showed you before, but that's only three hours data. Uh, with this, we will be able monitoring uh, a whole week at uh, thousands of uh, thousand one hundred amperes, and uh, <clears throat> also uh, we are going to run fully coupled. We want to run fully coupled simulations uh, of uh, of conductor in operation for extended periods of times, maybe fifty years, and. Uh, <clears throat> And, and uh, we are looking forward 
for uh, the implementation of a dynamic line rating scheme by our partners of SwissGrid. And with this, I just want to thank you for your attention. <laughs>